Street Fighter V is a game that disappointed with its story in many ways. Beloved characters got turned into jokes and in general there was a lot of build up with absolutely zero payoff. Most notable for this are the plots of four characters, Rashid, Gil, G and Rose. While Rashid's lack of payoff is a different story as he's the only one of these characters who's properly returned to Street Fighter VI, albeit as DLC, the events of the other three are made out to be of seemingly world-bending importance and are what Street Fighter V as a whole rounded off as building up to, which makes it incredibly weird that none of them are present in Street Fighter VI, and on the face of it, the game doesn't seem all that concerned with them at all. Well, I have a theory with some notable evidence to back it up that the plot of these three characters has in fact already happened, and that Street Fighter VI is even further into the future than we first thought. So, what was going on with this trio in the first place? Let's start with Gil, the easiest to explain. Gil is the main antagonist of Street Fighter 3. He's the leader of the Illuminati, and in Street Fighter 3, he's the host of the World Warrior Tournament. In 3, he chooses to reveal himself and the existence of the Illuminati to the public with a fight that he grants to the winner of the tournament, but he gets his ass beat and his brother blows him up. Street Fighter V takes place momentarily before Street Fighter III, and in it Gil seems to have been slightly changed somewhat. He repeatedly mentions something called the Gate of Harmony, and in A Shadow Falls he even notes in the ending cutscene that the prophecy he's following seems to no longer be going to plan, hinting things may not actually go the same way they did in Street Fighter III, but that's notably less important than the story of G. G is pretty much all but confirmed to be Q from Street Fighter III, just before he becomes his silent, metallic-faced counterpart, but he's a very, very far cry from this character. Cube is theorised to be some sort of government agent that's been present as far back as Street Fighter 2, but G is about as far from this as humanly possible. G is an incredibly loudmouthed, Abe Lincoln-esque character claiming to be, although it's implied that he isn't, President of the Earth. G's dialogue is very haughty and he speaks a lot, so much so that speeches are even a gameplay mechanic for G and the content of these can actually be pretty telling, I think. Let's listen to one. Now I do hereby declare to every single person on the planet Earth, from the very bottom of my soul and with the deepest of sincerity, that I am firmly resolute in my undertaking, that I will not yield to anyone or anything until I accomplish what I set out to do. Together, you and I will become one with Earth. I swear, the Earth and its people shall become one. Power to the people of Earth! That last line, Together, you and I will be one with Earth. I swear, the Earth and its people will become one, is very significant. But before I tie all this together, let's take a look at Rose. Rose is from the not wholly canon alternate timeline series Street Fighter Alpha. In those games, in order to be able to greater wield psycho power, M. Bison split his soul in two. Rose is the incarnate of all the good from Bison's soul, while Bison's soul is now pure evil. Rose is a fortune teller, and she winds up travelling into the Street Fighter V timeline by some happenstance, teaching Minat about fortune telling and doing nothing of importance during the game's main story, during which Bison gets exploded, making his soul just out in the ether somewhere. However, even with Bison no longer present, she senses some great power which unsettles her. The Oro Notes is one with nature which, of course, refers to G. After they fight together, G makes clear that something will happen to him and everyone on the planet. Rose thinks it's the end of everything, but it's G's ultimate goal. In their battle, Rose makes a reference to G's story mode, in which Rose tells his fortune where he receives the tarot card, The Fool, which generally means new beginnings. I'm sure anyone can see why I'm tying all these things together. So I believe that both G and Gil are actually seeking to literally unite all of humanity. And I believe this is done by putting all people's minds in the same headspace, rather than say that we all get turned to stardust and enter the Earth's core or something. It was my initial assumption upon its release that G was just going to Evangelion everyone into the gold-like material he seems to be able to manifest, but due to new information that's arisen from Street Fighter VI, I now believe this much more likely to be a spiritual merge rather than a physical one and that people won't just imminently pop into powder anytime soon. In order to actually address why I think this has happened already before Street Fighter VI even begins, it becomes necessary to question, where are all of these characters during Street Fighter VI, as it seems that they themselves are not present whatsoever, 
even though the whole plot was seemingly gearing up to address these three in particular. But even without their presence, the fabric of them is sewn all throughout Street Fighter VI. So first, let's look at G. G seems to be at the centre of all this, and yet he is completely absent, not even hinted at making an appearance at all. JP is our first and most obvious lead, as he not only shares his broad-shouldered, tall stature, but has now been seen donning the signature duffel coat and hat combo we only see on G and Q prior. In this trailer, he refers directly to Bison. He was obsessed, you see, with finding an appropriate vessel for this power. Saying that he saw endlessly for a vessel for this power, implying that JP does in fact wield psycho power to fight. We see JP perform this odd grab move that seems to not just use psycho power, but cause Bison himself to manifest within his very attacks, which would imply it might not be the case that JP himself is using psycho power, and it may in fact be the case that in some way he manages to control Bison, and that this piece of dialogue from the trailer is a red herring, part of a larger speech out of its original context. His attacks take the form, notably, of rifts and cracks, which are very consistent imagery used for multiversal plots in fiction, and even in his more esoteric attacks like spears and spikes, there's this odd pop of red petals as though all of these attacks are still bison in one way or another. None of these attacks take the form of things bison used to be able to do. Even teleporting, which bison originally could do, is visually completely different. And if JP does use Psycho Power directly, it's a far cry from the Hellfire Bison used to manifest, and I think it's actually much more likely that in some shape or form, he instead controls or manipulates Bison's soul, which is the actual raw form of Psycho Power now. Before I move on to Rose, I want to put a pin in the fact that Bison's soul seems to be a decoupled, separate entity to JP, rather than JP just having him inside his own body or possessing psycho power outright. Now, Rose being absent could mean either of a few things. If a great merge has happened, perhaps her soul has returned to Bison's soul. It's not entirely clear what would happen in this case, because both of them are impossibly more powerful as individuals than they were when they were just one soul, and they are so opposed in terms of mindset that I don't know if Bison would just return to being just as evil as he was in Street Fighter 2, or if he would become a better person altogether. If it's not this, her plot in Street Fighter 5 implies that to stop this great merge from happening, she would have to time travel back to Street Fighter 0, so maybe she's doing some off-screen time travel shenanigans. In either case, her absence would imply that she couldn't possibly be physically present in Street Fighter 6, so this checks out. And finally, for Gil. Gil, theoretically, doesn't survive Street Fighter 3. Theoretically. But we're unclear on whether Street Fighter 3 has in fact happened, and Street Fighter 6 is beyond that, or it is alternate to Street Fighter 3, and beside that. To address Gil, I have to bring up two games, Street Fighter 3 and Final Fight. Neither of these games have characters featuring on Street Fighter 6's roster, and yet it's supposed to be the first game taking place after Street Fighter 3, and it takes place in Metro City, the setting of Final Fight. I think that the reason for the lack of representation of these two franchises is because of grey morality. Street Fighter 3 was very much part of the franchise's edgy phase. It hadn't really grown out of it by 4, so I'm not saying this is the only somewhat gritty Street Fighter game, but characters like Alex and Sean are largely characterised by rage, and we have Emo Remy and Freaky Oro and Hugo within the roster too. I can't say that evil has been fully purged in Street Fighter 6, but almost every character on the base roster is a good guy, and the bad acts that we've seen so far in the game border on comical rather than any overt actual evil. Save for one specific thing, the framing of Ken for a terrorist attack, but there is all the possibility that this is more benign an act than it at first might seem. After all, it's unlikely that this terrorist attack he's being framed for actually killed anyone, and is more likely a kind of unibomber type act. Which would lead me to talk again about the main antagonist of Street Fighter 6, the Mad Gear Gang. These guys wear ridiculous paper bags on their head, and they seem to get in your character's way, 
which is just a far cry from the robbing and kidnapping Mad Gear gang of the original Final Fight series. Damned, who is the leader of them in Street Fighter 6, even just idly sits in the background of the first stage we saw revealed, and he just chills out and enjoys watching the fight. Again, this is speculation, but while this very specific interpretation might not come out this specific way, the reason I bring up this notable deficit in abject evil is to talk about why the base roster is who it is, which is a certainty. We now know, for a fact, that at least 16 of the 18 characters will be able to mentor your character, and one would think with the mentorship framing of the game that Capcom wouldn't want your create a character learning from anyone evil. So there's only two characters specifically who are in any doubt at whether they can teach your character or not. Marissa and JP. Again, this is speculation, it's entirely possible you can learn from both, but these two are unconfirmed and there are reasons to look into as to why Marissa of all people might be on the bad side and therefore locked off from being a mentor. Marissa fights using a combination of G's gold-based geomancy and Gil's martial arts-based normal attacks which is very, very weird for a character who's supposedly just a jeweler who really likes Rome, and just happens to own a coliseum that's Spartan themed. So this is why I had this long, long aside for where Gil actually is, and why black and white good and evil characters seem pivotal in Street Fighter 6. Because Gil's actually seen referenced plenty in Street Fighter 6, throughout things like very suspicious billboards, Marissa's moveset, and JP's red and blue street stage. And I'd argue he seems to perhaps be the very fabric of this reality, the host that G has somehow put everyone inside. Just look at this billboard, preaching about paradise and splitting even the ordinary businessmen into his iconic red and blue halves. His talk of the Gate of Harmony in Street Fighter V may reference some very specific kind of latent power that he has that we don't know the specifics of, that he and G have either worked together on, or G has forced into operation by some means. So to be clear, I think that Street Fighter 6 likely takes place in some form of pocket dimension. It's unclear if all evil is in another pocket dimension, not allowed into this pocket dimension, or just wiped out entirely, but it's likely that at least the soul of Bison specifically is powerful enough to manipulate it in some way, which is why he would either be part of JP's moveset or be important enough to be controlled by JP but I think that would make sense as to why his attacks look as if Bison is being brought into the realm from outside, rather than Bison actually being physically present within the realm normally. If we are all in the same mind, I think it would make sense that a character who specifically has psycho power and is nothing anymore except pure, raw, evil psychokinetic energy would stand to reason who's the only character who could interfere with such a thing, even after his death. Knowing Japanese media lately, I think it's entirely possible that the whole game takes place as a form of collective unconsciousness that we experience as a literal from the inside. Fights seem to specifically take place for fun, for mentorship, or to prevent people from directly interfering from the goals of the antagonists. There doesn't seem to be any outright evil or cruelty from anyone who isn't privy to or part of some great plan, at least not that we know of. That's in essence all the things I've listed in this video in descending order of likelihood, but I really do think that there's very good reasons to question the absences of these core characters and how suspicious it is that the elements we know of them are only apparent within very few of the NEW members of the cast. Thanks to anyone who got this far through the video. I'd like to reiterate that some of this video is pure speculation, which I tried to make very clear whenever it was present. But other things, like Bison's manifestation and JP's attacks, Gil's background appearances, and Marissa's fighting style borrowing from G and Gil, are all things that are very, very factual, and they're things that, if you think I'm wrong on, you should still think to yourself how to address. If you still think that I just completely made all of this video up, feel free to comment telling me I'm wrong, but I hope at least some of you think that I'm onto something with this. If you'd like to see more analysis or even more speculation in future, I'd really appreciate any of you who like and subscribe. And just like always, I'm going to end this video by saying, stay safe.